Hello and welcome to On This Day. Back here in the staff room, as you can probably see, with me pigeon proofing on the windows. And before we get started, let me explain On This Day. So on this day, we take events that happen on this day, the day being the 17th of February. And it doesn't matter that they're not for every day. They will be, they'll be there. I'll catch up with them soon. But we're going to the 17th of February today, so we will look at some people who were born, some people that died, some facts that happened on that day. So today we've got 13, and then we are finishing with some fun facts on science today and how things work. We've got 15 of them, so that's something to look forward to, but let's get started then. So, born on the 17th of February. Um, first one, before we get going, um, I missed off from yesterday, and that was Owen Field, and I think he was 23, 24, I think, maybe, who cares, it was yesterday, that was in the past, that was sort of 60, that's what for you Owen, because I forgot you yesterday, and then, born in 1874, was Thomas J. Watson Senior, American businessman, chairman and CEO of IBM, between 1914 and 1956, and he was born in Campbell, New York, and he died in 1956. In 1963, probably the greatest basketball player of all time, um, Michael Jordan, American Basketball Hall of Fame forward, um, five times NBA MVP, and six times NBA champion with Chicago Bulls, was born in Brooklyn, New York. Also, he went on to play baseball for a bit, but I was just remember that. And in 1972, Billy Joe Armstrong, American singer and musician, with Green Day with songs like Basket Case and um, American Idiot was born in Oakland, California. So the people who died on the 17th of February in 1890 was Christopher Lee from Skulls, American newspaper man, politician and inventor of the typewriter, died of tuberculosis, tuberculosis at 71. In 2007, Mike Alton, professional, American professional wrestler, he died, he was born in 1965, he died, and in, 19, in 2020, Mickey Wright, American golfer, 30 major titles, 82 LGPA tour wins, he dies from a heart attack, she was just 85, just, it's just not a bad age, is it? Anyway, what happened then, we got 13 of these, so in 17, 76, the first volume of Edward Gibson's seminal work, The Decline and the Fall of the Roman, Roman Empire, was published in 1791. Charles Messier catalogued M33, a spiral galaxy in Hydra. In 1801, the US House of Representatives Great Electoral College tied by electing Thomas Jefferson as president over Aramba. In 1837, we're just freezing shut on now. In 1837, Charles Lionel makes his professional address to the Geographic Society London announces that Richard Owen has concluded from Darwin's fossil that extinctions, extinct species were related to current species in the same locality. Clearly, in 1876, sardines first came by Julius Wolf in Esport in Maine. In 1883, A. Ashraf patents vacant engaged toilet lock in London. In 1936, the word, the world's first superhero, The Phantom, a cartoon strip by Lee Fox, makes his first appearance in comics. In 1963, Dutch churches protest at Semis in Quark against persecution of the Jews. In 1957, a fire at home for an elderly in Warrington, Missouri, kills 72 people. In 1963, the first weather satellite launched, Vanguard 2, it was 9.8 kilos. In 1972, the British Parliament voted to join the European Union. In 1958, NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft overtakes Pioneer 10 to become the furthest object from Earth in space. In 2020, um, Amazon boss Jeff Bezos pledges 10 billion to help fight climate change. So, fun facts today then are on how things work. So, 
pretty lean. Let's get started then. So babies have around 100 more bones than adults. Babies have around 300 bones at birth with cartilage between many of them. This extra flexibility helps them pass through the birth canal and also allows for rapid growth. With age, many of these bones fuse, leaving 206 bones that make up an average adult skeleton. The Eiffel Tower can be 15 centimetres taller during the summer when a substance is heated up. Its particles move and it takes up a larger volume. It is known as thermal expansion. Um, conversely, a drop in temperature causes it to contract as mercury levels inside the thermometer, for example, rises and falls as the mercury volume changes with the ambient temperature. This effect is most dramatic in gases, but occurs in liquids and solids such as iron too. For this reason, large structures such as bridges are built with expansion joints which allow them some leeway to expand and contract without causing damage. The one element which is a bit different to these is water. We may come on to that a bit later. And 20% of the Earth's oxygen is produced by Amazon rainforest. Our atmosphere is made up of roughly 78% um, nitrogen and 21% oxygen with various other gases present in small amounts. The vast majority of living or organisms on Earth need oxygen to survive, converting it into carbon dioxide. As they breathe, thankfully, plants continuously replenish our planet's oxygen levels through photosynthesis. During this process, carbon dioxide and water are converted into energy, releasing oxygen as a byproduct, converting 5.5 million square kilometers, 2.1 million square miles of outer rainforest circles, a significant proportion of the Earth's oxygen, absorbing large quantities of carbon dioxide at the same time. Some metals are so reactive that they explode in contact with water. There are certain metals, including potassium, sodium, lithium, Robinium and calcium that are so reactive that they oxidize or tarnish instantly when exposed to air. They can even produce explosions when dropped into water. All the elements strive to be chemically stable. In other words, to have a full outer electron shell to achieve this, metals tend to shed electrons. The alkali metals have only one electron and on that outer shell, making them ultra keen to pass on this unwanted passenger to another element via bonding. As a result, they form compounds with other elements so rapidly that they don't exist independently in nature. I'm going to turn that slide because you keep pulling these in my lovely side. There we go, Kyle. Okay, a teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh 6 billion tons. A neutron star, a neutron star is a remnant of a massive star there, one out of your dying star explodes into a supernova while its core collapses in on itself due to gravity forming a super dense neutron star. Astronomers measure the mind boggling large masses of stars or galaxies in solar masses with one solar mass equal to the sun's mass that is two times 1030 kilometers by 4.4 by 130 pounds. Typically, neutron stars have a mass of up to three solar masses, which is crammed in the atmosphere. The radius of approximately 10 kilometers, 2.3 miles, resulting in some of the densest matter in the known universe. And I apologize for the maps there. Didn't quite understand what I was reading. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Let's just put it this way, a neutron star. It's hot. It's heavy. Hawaii moves 7.5 kilometers closer to Alaska every year. The Earth's crust is split into gigantic pieces called tectonic plates. These plates are in constant motion, propelled by currents in the Earth's upper mantle. Hot, less dense rocks rise before cooling and sinking, giving rise to secular convection currents, which act like giant conveyor belts, slowly shifting the tectonic plates above them. Hawaii sits in the middle of the Pacific Lake, which slowly drifting northwest towards the North American plate. Back to Alaska, the pace, pace is comparable to the speed at which our fingernails grow. Chalk is made from trillions of microscopic plankton fossils. Tiny single-celled algae called, I've got a, I've got a strong one, Cocolithroids have lived in the Earth's ocean for 20 million, 200 million years, unlike any other 
marine plant, they surround themselves with minuscule plates of calcolite, chronicloids. Just under 100 million years ago, conditions were just right for colocafloids to accumulate in a thick layer coating ocean floors in a white ooze. As further sediment built up on top, the pressure compressed the colocafloids to form rock, creating chalk deposits such as white cliffs of Dover. Colocafloids are just one of the many prehistoric species that have been immortalized in fossil form. But how do we know they are? They, how old they are? Every time rock forms are holding or like leaving, older rocks at the bottom and younger rocks near the top. By studying the types of rocks in which the fossil is found, paleontologists have roughly guessed this age. Carbon dating estimates fossils age more precisely based on the weight of decay of radioactive elements such as carbon 14. But how can they be that old if the world is only 6,000 years old according to the Old Testament. Well, there you go. Who knew? Anyway, in 2.3 billion years, it will be too hot for life to exist on Earth. Over the coming hundreds of millions of years, the sun will continue to get progressively brighter and hotter. In just over 2 billion years, temperatures will be high enough to evaporate our oceans, making life on Earth impossible. Our planet will become a vast desert, similar to Mars today, as it expands into the red giant in the following few billion years, scientists predict that the sun will finally engulf Earth altogether, spreading a definitive end to our planet. Uh, there you go, it'll go in sometime. Polar bears are nearly undetectable by infrared cameras. Thermal cameras detect the heat loss by a subject as infrared, but polar bears are experts in conversing heat. The bears keep warm due to its thick layer of blubber under the skin. Add to this a dense fur coat and they can endure the sheer Arctic day. And it takes 8.8 8 minutes and 19 seconds for light to travel from the sun to the earth in space. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers or 100. 86 miles per second, even at this brain speed, covering the 150 million odd kilometers or 93 million miles between us and the sun takes considerable time. And eight minutes is still very little compared to the five and a half hours it takes the sunlight to reach Pluto. If you look out of, out, sorry, if you took out all the empty space in our atoms, the human race could fit the volume of a sugar cube, the atoms that make up the world around us seem solid, but in fact over 99.9999% empty space, an atom consists of tiny dense nucleus surrounded by a cloud of electrons spread over the proportionally vast area. This is because as well as being particles, electrons and light waves, electrons can only exist where the crest and drops of these waves and and correctly and instead of existing at one point each electron located is spread over a range of properties and orbits say for us occupy a huge amount of space stomach acid is strong enough to dissolve stainless steel your stomach digests food thanks to highly corrosive hydrochloric acid with a ph of two to three the acid also attaches the stomach lining, which protects itself by secreting an alkaline carbon. Carbonate solution the lining still needs to be replaced continually and it eventually renews itself every four days. The Earth is a giant magnet, and that's in the core, it's a sphere of solid iron surrounded by liquid iron. Variations in temperature and density create currents in this iron, which in turn produces an electrical current. Lined up by the Earth's spin, these currents combine to create a magnetic field used by compasses and needles worldwide. So, compass needles worldwide. Venus is the only planet to spin clockwise. Our solar system started off as a swirling cloud of dust and gas, which eventually collapsed into a spinning disk with the sun at its center because of its common origin. All of the planets move around the sun in the same direction and are roughly the same plane. They also all spin in the same direction, counterclockwise, 
different uh, from above, except Uranus and Venus. Uranus spins on its side, whilst Venus definitely, definitely spins in the completely opposite direction. And most likely cause of these planetary audibles are gigantic asteroids, which knock them off their course in distance past. And finally, a flea can accelerate faster than the space shuttle. A jumping flea reaches dizzying heights of about 8 centimeters 3 inches in a millisecond. Acceleration is the cha change in speed of an object over time, often measured in its g's, with 1g equal to the acceleration caused by gravity on Earth. 9.8 meters, 32.3 feet per, per square second. Please experience 100 g g's while the space shuttle peaks at around 5 g's. The flea's secret is a stretchy rubber-like protein which allows it to store and release energy like a spring. Well, there you go, it's a bit of science you probably didn't know. This has been your man in Shadow NDP. Hope that you're all well. Hope you're all staying safe. And there you go. That was on this day, the 17th of February. See you about.